It's a roadblock block party today on Toy Habits. We are taking a look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series version 1 release, comparing into his version 2 field variant, debuting his custom file card, and if that wasn't enough, we have a customizer spotlight featuring Ed, who customized a vintage-inspired version 2 roadblock in his 1986 likeness. And before we get into the review, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you can be alerted to the latest reviews, news, and episodes when they drop. Hey everyone, welcome back to Toy Habits, and today we are taking a detailed look at the G.I. Joe Classified Series Version 1 Roadblock, comparing him to his Version 2 Field Variant, debuting his custom file card, and Ed has graciously shared his process for how he customized a Version 2 vintage-inspired 1986 G.I. Joe Classified Series roadblock that you don't want to miss, so let's get right to it. And let's start off like we usually do by looking at the box, and Roadblock comes in the G.I. Joe Classified Series window display box where you can see all of his accessories that he comes with. And zeroing in on the art on the front of the box, you get vibes that Roadblock is a no-nonsense type of Joe. He's got the back the F off or what the heck are you looking at? Are you looking at me vibe going on? And I love the way that half of his face is in a shadow here. And just the way that his face is illustrated just makes him look like he is a no-nonsense kind of guy. And looking at the side of the box, I could totally see Roadblock donning a pair of shades as he's going into battle. I think that's just an amazing look for him. And you can see down at the bottom on the side of the box that he is punching the lights out of these alley vipers that have crowded around him. And he's definitely living up to the reputation of a one-man wrecking crew. And looking at the back of the box, you can see Roadblock is dead center in the box, and he just looks like he is having a fantastic time wielding that huge laser cannon, and you can almost hear him be like, ah, as he's firing off shots. We are debuting Roadblock's custom G.I. Joe Classified Series file card designed by the talented Gerald of Digifix, and he has introduced a brand new design pattern to these cards that we introduced for the movie series, and we'll be using this new design pattern moving forward for all the file cards. If you notice, there's a second image of Roadblock in the lower right of the card, which really brought these file cards to the next level. You can find the free download in the description, along with Gerald's contact information, so hit him up for all of your digital design needs. And let's take a closer look at Roadblock's abilities. He is a level 4 vanguard, he's a level 3 at wielding heavy weapons, he is a level 4 strength, and a level 4 at artillery. And now that Roadblock's out of the box, we can first take a look at his head sculpt. And his head sculpt is pretty plain, and he really doesn't have a facial expression. And what is really telling the story here is his eyes. His eyes have a don't mess with me look, and he is staring you down pretty hard. I do like his beard design. If we turn him around to the side, his beard goes up to the bottom of his ears on both sides, and I do like his goatee, and I think his facial proportions are done very well, and they've even given him some furrowed brows to kind of go along with that don't mess with me look. And if we turn him around to the back, you can see that his head sculpt is also pretty plain back there, but I do like the fact that his collar on his vest goes all the way up to his neck, kind of hiding that ball joint articulation for his neck. And focusing in on Roadblock's vest, he's been given a vest that is not sculpted on his torso, so I really like that. It's made of that rubbery material that you can bend, flex, and move, but it really doesn't move that much because it's really form-fitting on Roadblock, so there's really not much movement here, but it does add some depth and dimension to this figure. And the figure's vest is given some splashes of red color to resemble more of the vintage look from the version 2 roadblock. He's also been given the G.I. Joe classified star on his pouch here. And he also has some nice red and blue detail going all the way around his shoulder and all the way to the back. And if we follow this around, we have this nice gray pouch and strap detail with some gold color on it. And I think overall the vest looks really nice. And you can also see that there's a sheath for his dagger. So we'll get to that when we review his accessories. And another aspect of this vest that I really like are the fold lines that they've given. And it really makes it look like he's actually wearing this piece of clothing. And it lays pretty naturally like a human being was wearing this vest. 
And another aspect of the vest that I really like is the gray sculpting detail that they have going all the way around his vest, which really ties into the pouch and the strap and this comms link that run all the way from the back to the front. And taking a closer look at Roadblock's arms, he has been given the most jacked arms that I've seen on a figure. And you can see all the muscle detail and the vein detail here, and also the striations in the muscles in his forearms. And I think they did a great job just representing the human body here. And I do like the splashes of red and gray that they have on his gloves. I just think it makes the figure look a lot more interesting. And the money shot here is the lion tattoo that you can see on his arm here. And I think they did a great job printing this on here, but once you start articulating the figure, the line gets a little weird, so just beware of that, and that is the nature of the super articulated figures, but I doubt you'll be posing him in those kind of weird poses, and it might not make a difference. And taking a closer look at his thighs, he's been given some nice pockets and some nice pouches on his thighs, and you can also see some of the texturing detail that they've given him here, and it's just a basic gray set of pants that he's been given, and really they've added a lot of splashes of color if you move down to the knee armor here, and he's been given a very nice piece of gold knee armor, and I think this is for when he kneels down and fires off his laser cannon, so got to make sure that his knee is protected when he's doing that. And the knee armor has been just given some defining lines here just to make it a little bit more interesting so it's not just a flat piece of knee armor, which gives his knee a more interesting look. And moving down to the shin armor and the shoes, he's been given a very angular piece of shin armor here, and it's painted in gold and reds. And if you look at his shoes, his shoes also have that gold color, so it kind of looks like he's wearing dress shoes in his military uniform, but I really like the way the shoe is done and it's got some tread on the bottom and even a small little heel. And if you turn the figure around to the back, you can take a look at the back of the shin armor and you can see the strap detail that is going around his boots. And I do like the overall presentation of this. And some people might be turned off by the coloring of the shin armor and the shoes, but to each his own, I don't particularly like this particular color scheme, but I do like the way the knee armor is sculpted here. And Roadblock's been given the bare amount of accessories here, and he does come with a typical dagger, and you can see some of the fine lines that they've given it on the handle, and you can also see some of the riveting detail that they've given it there. And I wish they had colored the handle a little bit differently to kind of set off the sculpting and the lines that they've given it here, because the all-silver color just makes all the lines and all the detail just very washed out. And next up, let's take a look at his magazine that goes in his laser cannon. And I do like the way that this is painted. And you can see that there's blue lines over here and there is just a empty cell. And it just makes it look like his gun has already discharged that part of the magazine and it's ready for cells two and three. And I can see why he was given just a basic amount of accessories because he has just been given a huge cannon to deal with that Really, only Roadblock is probably capable of handling, but I don't like really how this is painted in reds, silvers, and blues. I really wish that this was maybe one singular color, but the gun looks really cool, and the end of the gun is molded in more of a translucent blue, so it looks like it's actively charging. And so you can stick the magazine clip in here which is a very nice addition to this gun and it just completes that look and here is roadblock all geared up holding his extremely large laser cannon that's what she said and you can see that his knife sits neatly in his vest there and i just think he just looks really awesome holding this cannon and just to make a quick comparison between his version 1 sculpt and his version 2 sculpt, they are the same figure but just different paint apps and Hasbro just stripped out all the golds and reds from the vest aside from the center parts of the vest and the parts that go over his left shoulder. But you can see that version 2 is just a very toned down version of version 1 and they even did that to the gun. So let's take a closer look at those. 
and taking a closer look at the guns, they've stripped out the majority of color on about 90% of the gun, but did leave that translucent blue color at the end there. But I do think they should have left the color in the magazine here because I think that just would have added to the displayability of this gun to make it look like it's discharging the energy that's in that magazine. Okay, so what if you do if you're not thrilled with either version of Roadblock? Ed shared his process for turning a Roadblock version 2 field variant into a vintage inspired version that brings back all the 1986 feels, so let's share the details on his process. In Ed's opinion, the first thing you must do when customizing a figure is to figure out what bothers you about the figure. Makes sense, right? For him, it was the fact that the figure did not scream Roadblock to him. For Ed, Roadblock was a cross between Jazz from the Transformers, a linebacker, and Billy D. Williams from Star Wars. And he could not see him that way in the way that Hasbro made him. So Ed took on the challenge by watching reviews of someone who did a head swap with the Marvel Legends Netflix Luke Cage, and he liked it so much, he got that head sculpt. He then used lacquer thinner to remove the lion tattoo from his left arm, and next he boiled and popped him to remove his arms from the ball joint shoulder and then the ball discs from his body. He then taped off the part that he didn't want painted. He took his Dremel and then took a small amount off the discs in his shoulders to prevent paint rub. Then he shimmed the vest off the body. Next, he took an airbrush, primed the parts, and let them dry for a couple days. He then painted two layers of white, and while that was drying, he repainted the vest and repainted the Joe Pro shade of brown that was close to the surrounding paint, and then he removed the blue and picked out other details in browns, blacks, and tans. He then applied two clear coats with his airbrush, and after everything was dry, he removed the tape, heated up the vest, and shimmed it back on, reattached the arms to the shoulders, and the shoulders back to the torso. Then he cleaned up the overspray, then gave him a new head and an M50 Cal machine gun that the version 2 roadblock came with in 1986, and voila, according to Ed, you have a great looking roadblock. And I wholeheartedly agree. Ed, thank you for sharing your process, and I am sure that this will inspire more customizers to change their roadblocks to match how they want to see him in the line. Although this roadblock is not my favorite version in the line, it gave me an excuse to debut his custom G.I. Joe Classified series file card and showcase Ed's great work as he did an amazing job recreating that vintage feel of roadblock from 1986. Well, let us know what you think about the version 1 roadblock, Ed's custom, and the file card in the comments below, and thanks for tuning in to Toy Habits.